Hi there. Um, I'm <laughs> this is a serious, serious um, so, uh, I'm Jason Harvey, and uh, some of you know me, so I've met some of you, um, and then a lot of uh, your new faces because you're new to fans, you're new to, to this whole activity. Um, I've been a part of the Woodlands High School cluster for now. Um, it's 11 years. So the last three years, I was one of the directors at Woodlands High School, the band directors there, and prior to that, I was a full-time private instructor for about seven years, so I taught about 90 students a week. Um, <clears throat> and so I, you know, and a lot of them came from here. So I was just really uh, excited about the opportunity to be able to work here full-time with students because there's, you know, always been uh, such just amazing um, potential here, and, and so I'm excited to be part of it. Um, I guess that's <laughs> Isn't my picture awesome? <laughs> okay, I looked really good in junior high. Um, my name is Mark Hale Hicks, and um, I am the woodwind teacher. I teach all the woodwinds. It's flute, clarinet, saxophone, bass, clarinet, oboe, bassoon, and other assorted woodwind types. Um, I went to Te Texas Tech University. Oh, okay. um, and we have two children together, Brooklyn and William. Brooklyn is in eighth grade at McCullough. She's a percussionist in the band. And our son, William, is a sixth grader this year, and he's a bass clarinet player in my class. So that's fun. I know, it's adorable, really. Uh, but we're, we're really excited um, to have your kids this year. Even though it's been a crazy start to the year, we're, we're, we're trying to get back in here and get them going. We have a lot of activities planned, especially for the sixth graders. Um, we'll be adding a couple of uh, social dates to our calendar. There's some that are not on here, but we want to try to plan some social events uh, for each grade. So we'll be emailing him about that, and we can look for those a little bit later. And, and that's me, Ralph Hicks. <laughs> I've been a percussion class, but in case you can't tell, I make the slides. So, yeah, and I've been here, I believe this has been my ninth or tenth year here at Mitchell. I love it here. I plan on retiring here. I had no idea how a public school band program could work until I came here. It was one of the stress that laid off from other programs. I love it here, I find out being here. Okay, hey, buddy. So, and yes, we are great. We still have kids asking that too. Wait, are you just kidding? Yeah, it happens. Ryan didn't ask me if we were brother and sister. <laughs> Still a love and appreciation of music in each child while fostering the necessary work ethic to succeed in the global market. We always talk about the instrument being just the medium. We're teaching them all kinds of life lessons on how to be organized, how to achieve a goal, how to set a goal, how to be held holding yourself accountable, how to be accountable to a group. We do all that, but it just happens to be for an instrument. And you can see um, down here, we also talk about, we see it as a very long program. We teach them as if we are going to see them all the way through the Woodlands High School program as a senior. And we want to make sure that all those that do choose that route, which I believe um, five years ago, they were ranked sixth in the nation. And I'm oh, sorry, we won in the nation. Sorry, this year we're ranked sixth in the nation, which is cool. And we want to make sure they have the skills to survive, because we all know how Woodlands can be, can be ultra competitive, but we always believe the philosophy is you can counter that with preparation. So we want to make sure they feel prepared to walk into that high quality program. Yes. Orchestra is a program started around the 14th century. Oh, <laughs> orchestra is over in the gym. This is for band blowing and hitting things. Orchestra, the gym is down that hallway and to the left. 
And uh, anyway, so this is a, some of the philosophy we like. It's a student-teacher-parent relationship that we feel like if we all just stay true to this, it'll work out. So for us, for teachers, we are here because we love to teach. We're here to set achievable goals and to help kids reach them. And we'll make the class as enjoyable as, and productive as the class will allow. So if we've got kids that we can joke with them, cool, joke and joke and joke and joke. If we've got kids that can't joke, we might calm them down, but we all have to keep our goals in mind. And then as parents, you are here because obviously you support your child. You want to help your child achieve the goals that they set for them by us. And you want to support the teacher and what they set out to accomplish. Which sounds pretty obvious. And then the students, they're there because they love their instrument. They want to learn the trumpet. They want to get really good at trombone, etc. And then the kids will work to achieve the goals that we set for them. And they will participate in class with a high energy and positive attitude. I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that. As long as we all remember why we're there. Because we know there's a lot of frustration that could be run the road. And here's the at-home support. We do really believe that band is closer to a sport than it is a class because of so much physical demands. It's equally physically demanding and mentally demanding, and they have a very long learning curve. The wind instruments have a very long, because they're, it's like walking in a choir for your first day and going, because you have no idea how to read, you have no idea how to breathe, you have no idea how to make anything happen with your lungs, so it could be anything. And that's pretty much what we walk in. We don't even know how to put the thing together. And you can imagine living through Google and YouTube and everything is just immediate and immediate and immediate. I think one of our classes, we figured out I can order a pizza in seven clicks of a screen. And it's like, it's so, so, so easy. But then they get to something that's not easy. And of course, they go straight to, oh, I, I can't do this. This is too hard. And they give up way before they should. And so we want to make sure that we provide the, the, the solid, supportive um, environment to make sure that it can happen. And we noticed this. That as your level of stress decreases, you'll notice your level of preparation is inside. So the more you prepare for it, I did this right, didn't I? It's, it's facing the right direction. It's like math. Okay, <laughs> okay, I hope I'm not myself. But the level of preparation you have, the more of that you have, the less amount of stress you'll have. And kids don't believe that. They think, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I have this test, I can't do it, I can't do it. Well, how much did you practice? Well, none. But, but I just don't know, like, well, there's your solution right there. So we'll help them keep that track and keep that in mind. And there we go. That's what I was saying before. I love this. I saw this the first time on Facebook. I doubt, immediately saved it. Never stop trying because you never know when you're going to reach the good stuff. Cool. All right. The pausing procedures. You don't want to read okay. okay. I can't remember who's still the sign of All right. The grading. We don't want grades to be an issue. We want to be pretty much like PE where if you do what we ask you to do, we'll make sure that you have a solid grade. And so the participation, the weekly participation grade. So basically, if they have their stuff, if they have their instrument, they have their binder, and they at least try what we're asking them to do, they'll be fine. There, there will be no C's or D's or anything like that. And then the planning tests. And um, this becomes an issue every once in a while because this might be the first time a kid really has to put it out there. Some kids don't have the benefit of having to be in that batter's box when they were seven, but feel that pressure of what it's like to be in front of a lot of people and knowing everyone's looking at me. Not all the kids have that yet, so sometimes it can be just for their first experience, but it needs to happen. We need to make sure kids play in front of each other. It's not a big deal, but you'll see that we have a full system that Mr. Harvey's going to talk about later on called Charms, where they can make up their grades on video, so they can be at home, which would be nice. Then our practice records, they're going to be weekly journals, and Harvey just, like you said, it knocked up Austin. Knocked up Austin. Knocked us off. <laughs> and uh, we haven't started our practice journals yet in the percussion class, but we'll be getting those started soon. And you can see right here, I want to make sure everyone remembers for the practice records, that's what normally brings a grade down. If some kid just forgetting to get them signed or forgetting to do them or just not even practicing at all. That I mean, the participation is very rarely hard to get that. Plan tests, you'll be surprised how well you'll do. It's this right here because practice records are all about accountability. Will he, will he sign it even though no one has reminded him? Has he done the practicing even though there's no one there to make him? All that kind of stuff. All right, the band fees. They're uh, about the same as last year. Brass and Woodwind will be $35. And the percussion will be $60 because they will uh, be able to play a lot of school on equipment. All the fees that we collect will go towards equipment purchases, instrument repair, and hiring professional clinicians like we used to get the biggest, the baddest low brass teacher on uh, how much do you like a private lesson grade? You know, but now we got a full time. Bam! So we'll be getting some of this, I guess. Cool. And the band fee is in lieu of a band fundraiser. 
Yes, no fundraiser. Yeah. It's so nice. I'm like, dude, come on. No, is important to make habits, okay? If they're not getting it right and moving on, then they're not mastering anything. So please uh, try to ensure that you hear them doing things five times in a row, you know, 
to 10 times more, uh, depending on what they're doing and how important it is. So, um, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, the repetition part is really the key to success. So, um, practice pockets. I actually don't know. Okay. <laughs> 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 Well, that's what happens when you wait for the very last minute to make the slides. They don't have time. <laughs> anyway, but the practice pockets, we started that a couple of years ago where, I mean, I love it when kids come in and say, I don't have any time to practice. And back then I could say, really? Well, who was your favorite person on American Idol last night? Oh my gosh, you should have seen that. Uh, yeah, oh, you have time to watch American Idol, but you don't have time to practice. And it can be very easy. Oh my, man, I remember it wasn't that big a deal for me to do the baseball, the basketball, whatever, but now, Man, these schedules are crazy huge. And so I can totally understand a kid feeling like, no, I cannot take one more thing out of my plate, I'm gonna lose it. But, and so we understand how you feel that way. So one day, probably next week in class, we're gonna hand out these practice pockets. And what it does, it takes the day from 6.30 all the way to bedtime, and Sunday through Saturday, and lets them go ahead and write in their own schedule. So they know, I get up at this time, I bathe, and then I do whatever, I get to school at this time, I have football on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I've got soccer on Tuesday, Thursday. I've got the blah, 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 It's just everywhere. And all of a sudden, they'll discover, hey, wait, there's 30 minutes on Thursday and I'm not doing anything. Ooh, I can take that one. And there's 7.15 to 7.45 on, on Tuesday. I can pick that pocket in. And so that helps them figure out how to manage the time, and it helps a lot. Do you have to practice? Yes. Cool. All right. The, uh, the Woodlands High School cluster has a really robust um, private lesson ecosystem, okay? Um, it's, it's a, I mean, we have some of the very best teachers that are in the city of Houston teaching our individual instruments. And, um, and we have a list on the back of the, uh, the calendar that's the list of private lesson teachers, okay? And we have a few for each instrument for the most part. Um, if, it's, if, if there's only one person to contact, uh, that's just because we don't need more than one teacher that has, has fewer people that play it, so it can handle by one teacher. And that's best because it's consistent. So, um, and any of these people on here are, are people that we would recommend. They, um, you know, if you call one and they're busy, then call the next one on the list. And they're vetted through the school district. They have had background checks done. Uh, they've just really cranked, uh, you know, cranked, cranked up the security clearance on private lesson uh, teachers, so, so everything's safe. Um, there's always a, usually a faculty member present, supposed to be a faculty member present any time a private lesson is going on. So <clears throat> uh, places where you can take lessons, uh, this school is open, and this is based on the teacher's availability, you have to work this out with them. But uh, I'm here until eight o'clock on Mondays, um, usually, uh, teaching myself, uh, students from the high school that come over here. And, uh, and so I'm here supervising, and that, that can be a location where lessons can go. Uh, most teachers teach at Little High School, so you would travel to that place. If you're a car rider, you can get there earlier. If uh, you're a bus rider, then you probably can't start until 5 o'clock or 5 or 5 30. But some teachers will teach as late as 7 o'clock, 7.30, um, to accommodate whatever schedule. <clears throat> the, the rate is $25 to $30 per half hour. That's basically, it's teacher to teacher. They kind of decide the rate. Um, I know people that, parents that I've talked to that, who have said um, their child takes piano lessons or guitar lessons, usually the rate's a lot higher than that. It's like, it's double that sometimes. So it's a pretty decent rate, um, and it's a competitive rate throughout the city, and that's how we keep our good teachers, we keep really great teachers. Um, and, right, everything's handled with the teacher. So, yeah, and just about 100% of, of the students at the high school and junior high level are enrolled in the lesson program. Uh, and the lessons take place once a week, uh, usually a half hour to an hour, depending on what the child needs. Uh, lessons can be tutoring if your child's behind, and they can also be advanced you know, material if your child is bored in band. And that's an important thing because you know, when you have a class of 30, it's a really large class for, for beginners. I mean, even in sixth grade, they're still beginners. You know? That's a large class, and I have, I have 30, she has 50 sometimes. Yeah, and, and there's absolutely no way that we can give individual attention to every single student every single day. And sometimes if I don't see a kid or listen to a kid, you know, I mean, I'll hear every kid once a day on one note. You know what I mean? Like, I won't hear, unless we have a special playing test, 
I won't hear them on a scale or a piece of music or something like that. And so I may not be seeing all of the things that they're, they're weak at, you know, but a private lesson teacher can diagnose that stuff and, and fix it and give them a, a plan, give them a track, give them extra advanced material they need it. So I can't speak highly enough about the reports of private lessons. And right now, we have very few people enrolled in private lessons in our neighborhood. And I, I kind of came to be really shocked about that because it's always been a really important thing. And, and I guess, you know, I, what I think it is is that the students are really skeptical. They have a lot of stuff going on. And so, so what I encourage you to do, that's why we have multiple people. Um, usually the, the schools are open, the schools can be open on the weekends. Uh, I know my wife, she teaches French horn. I teach uh, lessons and I open up the high school on weekends sometimes. So, you know, it's, it's usually something that can be worked out. Um, also, when it comes to practicing, I had a student this morning tell me, I just can't practice because I go to my brother's soccer on Monday, Wednesday, I go to karate on Tuesday, Thursday. I said, well, what do you do when your brother's playing soccer? He's like, I just sit in the gym. I said, well, now you're going to practice out of the car. You're going to you're gonna either practice inside the car or the weather's nice, or you're going to open up the door, and you're going to sit on your feet on the ground, and, you know, in, in the seat sideways, and you're going to practice out the door. You're going to work on your skills. You know, and that's something you can do. So um, there's always ways to figure it out. Awesome, all right, moving on to some technology. There's all kinds of fun stuff going on. First one, we're gonna do a music theory website called musictheory.net, and um, it's a fantastic note naming exercise game. It's, it can be either the website itself if you like, and it's free, or you can download the app from the app store, I believe it's $4 now. But I think that's for a it's for iPhone too, yeah. It's for it's the iOS native app. So very native. But yeah, and so um, it's free if you go to the website. It's like four dollars if you go through the app store. But I, I actually know the trumpet professor. He's from a um, school in, up in Ohio in Akron, and he designed the site for his college students. And I've used it so much for free that I I gladly drop the four bucks into his pocket because it's very impressive. Here's all the different kind of lessons because we know how they are. You got kids paying attention. Kid paying attention, kid sweetly, kid paying attention, kid paying attention, <laughs> or is this different? Whatever. And you never know, they might have gone, oh wait, oh no, I think I didn't pay attention for about 10 minutes today. What are we talking about? Well, they can go to these websites and it just reviews everything for them. It even spells it out. Read. It goes up through all kinds of great theory lessons, but you can tell it's designed for college kids because we only need the first couple. After that, like, generic specific intervals. They don't need to know what a metropolitan, uh, Neapolitan chord is and all this stuff, but they need to know all these. But my favorite one are the exercises. And these are the ones we do a lot. These are the ones you're going to do with us right now! Yay! Woo! So, you got lines and spaces. You can turn them on to where the kids can only guess on the lines, or you can do on the spaces, but we'll go ahead and do all of them because we're doing all right. And we'll do triple clef and helper. So you can see this is what we do in the percussion class every day. Without even thinking about it, we just start saying them. So can y'all see where your answers are? All right, let's see how long it takes us to do 50 of them. Ready? Go! E, F, F, G, B, C, F, C, D, E, A. I love this app, it's really cool, but then it has a couple of ones 
that way. This is cool for percussionists. We haven't started this one yet, but it does it where you have to recognize the key, which is pretty nice. You have to be able to tell it, because it takes out the letter and it makes it two cross, which is awesome. All right. So that one's great. I love that one. Next, we're going to have the six come on board to talk about some tonal energy. Can you eat up like 15 seconds? Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the next um, app that we're talking, we're going to talk about, uh, and I'm, we're going to show you also how we use it in class. Um, this is a tuning app, and we use it for fifth grade and sixth grade. For sixth graders, we really use it just to tune our instruments to make sure that. It's going to tune okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but the sixth graders we use it to tune our instruments, so we sound more alike. So when we're playing together, it sounds, you know, like actual music instead of silver bird down, down the staircase. So we use that for the, for the big kids, but we also use it for the little kids. Right now, we're working on just uh, the muscles around our mouth, the embouchure. And the tuning app can help us to see, they can visualize if they're using the proper amount of pressure on the reed, the, the, the corners are set correctly, um, the head joint is rolled out in the right position because the, the note that they produce will, will show them um, if they're doing those things correctly. So let me just show you what the sixth graders do.
but it's really difficult because they, they don't, they're sensory, they're not quite there yet, so this is a great visual tool for them. Yeah, in, on grass, we're going to be pretty soon, uh, I'll, be doing this, I'll be doing this with the fifth graders and the sixth graders. So on another screen, what you have is, They have a pitch wheel, okay, that they can use to like, it'll sustain. They want a natural pitch on like, for instance, you can change this, it's on bass clarinet right now. You can change it to, change it to trombone. Okay, so you're going to have to So next up, um, this is something that has been around for a little while, and some programs use it, some programs don't. This year, the district is basically mandated that we, do, we use this. Charms is a tool that uh, keeps inventory, it keeps our library, we have input all of this. It also keeps our students, um, our students' information uh, so that we can do things like, and really it's much more useful at the junior high and high school level, but um, like for instance, when we have uh, the sixth grade Lindon Ensemble, which is by audition, it's more information coming up on that later. Um, and we need to take them to a uh, main event or the band contest that we take them to, okay? In order for us, us to do that, we have to submit a travel report. Well, in Charms, all we have to do is, once students who make that ensemble, once we put them into a group, all we have to do is hit a couple of buttons and we can generate a list of exactly those kids and turn it down. You know, those are some of the functions we have, but we have to have every student input it into it. Now, if you are a brass parent of a student who has a school instrument, French horn, tuba, euphonium, and I've checked instruments out, I've already inputted your child because I needed to do inventory. So um, the way that you do this, this is really simple. You have to have the student ID, okay? So um, this is, let's see where we go. So you would log in, this is Charm's office, okay? Charm's office assistant. You log in, oh, sorry. I'm not reading. So under parents, students, and members, okay? Hello, ladies. Sorry about that. Um, it is capital Mitchell. We'll share this later. Capital I N T. Capital Band. Right, Mitchell into Band. Caps on the first initials. So enter that. I'm going to make up a student password, 
or a student uh, ID. Into that. And then you will get to that. Uh, then you enter in all the information for the child, okay? Um, and it'll, it'll continue to prompt you to ask. And you can put as much information in there as you want. Really what we need is an email contact, a phone contact for you um, is, is the best for us to keep uh, consistent with what they need for junior high and high school level. Because here's what's cool is that when kids graduate, when they move on to middle school, we just put the kids that are inactive that aren't going to the finish or aren't going to stay in band, which hopefully there aren't any of those, and, uh, and then we just basically graduate all the kids and it goes straight over to McCullough, and now they have all that information too. Okay, so it's a really cool system. And then when they're, after two years, they do the same thing and they send all of the information to the high school. So if we could get all of you to input, uh, you know, a little bit, that saves us time, first of all, and then we can use it the way that we need to, okay? There's also a really great way for us to send out last emails to everyone through this. You'll, you'll see email through Charms. Um, also, the other thing that we're, that's, we're going to use this for is for uh, playing test makeups. So there's an app called Charms Blue. Okay, Charms Blue. Kids can get that for free, um, and it's a real simplified way for them to get into Charms. The recording studio is what we're going to use the most, and it's a really simple way of doing it. We don't have any Okay, all right. We'll send them some screenshots or some video on how to do that, but um, it's a way for them to be able to record things from home and get unlimited takes at it. Let's say they have a really poor playing test, they want to make it up, okay, and get that 100 or you know, whatever we can give them. Uh, they would just record it on Charms Blue. They would, uh, and they can, once they can save it or they can cancel it if they didn't like it, uh, and they label it and they send it in and we get it. And then we can, we can listen to that on a conference period or you know, anytime we do. So that's Charms, and that's something that, that the district is asking us to have everyone to sign up for. Just what everyone wants, another login account. <laughs> yeah, and our last one, I believe we're almost done, is the year at a glance. Turbo. Okay, I'm just gonna go through the calendar very quickly, um, mostly for the fifth grade parents. Um, the, you'll notice on here that the fifth grade events are bolded and italicized. You'll also notice that there's only three of them. <laughs> We don't have a whole lot of outside of school activities for fifth grade, um, just because we just we want to make sure that they can play. So we're not asking a whole lot of uh, you know outside of school time just yet. So our first real concert in front of humans is going to be February first, and um, we uh, will play a little bit on in December. You'll see right above that on the 19th. There's going to be a showcase. That's where we play for the students here at school. Um, that is something that you could come to if you wish. We also record those just in case you can't, so you can still see them play. That particular one will be playing in one little song that lasts for about 30 seconds. So their real concert will be February 1st. Um, the next event we have for fifth days is going to be the fifth grade solo festival. Um, that's where they have an opportunity to learn a solo and perform it in front of their class. We invite the parents to come in and watch, we take pictures, it's really cool. They get really scared, but once a couple kids start doing it, then they all do it, so. It's a, it's a, it's a really good event. Um, then, the other big thing we have is May 24th, the fifth break spring concert, and you'll see a huge improvement in May from February to May. It's gonna be a giant leap. Just like you're gonna hear all these mouthpieces, just give it another, like about mm, three more weeks and you'll actually maybe start recognizing songs, which will be super. Um, so that'll be fun. Now, sixth grade parents, you've got a lot of stuff on here. Are there any sixth grade parents even here? Ooh, yay! Okay, so we have lots of really fun stuff for sixth graders. Now, I don't have a lot of time to go through these things, so we'll just send home very detailed emails about each event as they approach. Um, the one that's coming up is for sixth grade. is going to be that McCullough football game that we attend, and that's October 3rd, and it's super fun. Um, so the 50s, well, they'll be able to do that next year. Um, but there are many, many dates on here. There is a couple that we don't know the dates for yet. But as you know, as we get that information, we will certainly let you know. Um, if yay! Um, now, if you have any questions about anything that's on the calendar, or just anything that we talked about or did not talk about that you have a question, please feel free to email us. Our email addresses are really easy. It's either mhicks at conrise dot net, rhicks or jharvey. So we're, we're completely available for you and